Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Brog. It's been a while since I've recorded an episode of the Brog. This is episode 83. So, for those of you just tuning in, I st- I have, for whatever reason been talking into a camera and talking to myself as long as I can remember, as far back as I can remember. So I started this brog, I actually originally called it the Adam Josh Oral Brog. Brog as a sort of uh, comedic reference to Kim Jong, the late Kim Jong Il and Matt Parker and Trey Stones, or Trey Parker and Matt Stones, rather, um, Team America World Police, where they, the North Koreans pronounce their L's, or their R's like L's, and their L's like R's. The broad. Ironry, so ironry. But I started the Adam Josh Oral Brog over a year ago. And the idea was I had I had uh, just got out of the hospital, and uh, I'll tell you the truth of it is I had just got out of the hospital. It's a September twenty eighth, two thousand and ten, so more like two years ago, right? But I had got out of the hospital for a kidney problem that I had had. The short of you can check out uh, the Adam Josh Oral Brog. The show that you're watching, uh, episode one and two, I think the second one is called uh, The Catheter Diaries, and you can see the whole story, so I won't go over that. If you can, you want to hear the story about why I was in the hospital, you can see it yourself. But the short of it is, I was in the hospital, and I got out of the hospital, and I realized, uh, hey, I could have died, and I haven't... uh, been doing some things that I know that I should be doing, like, uh, we're all going to go one day, right? So I figure if you have things that you want to do in your life, do them. So one of the things that I was regretting not doing while I was thinking and contemplating my death, I was ill in the hospital. I was told that I was under threat of kidney dialysis and I was thinking, I really could have died. And then I'm thinking all these things, I had like a week in the hospital to think of all these things I wanted to do uh, that I hadn't done. Not so much like big life goals, because I've already, between you and me, I've already accomplished a lot of the life goals that I had set out when I was younger. So I'm sort of in a pa- in a place of I need to make more life goals. <laughs> but at the time in the hospital, I had thought, I really regret not just expressing myself on camera like you can find videos of me playing songs and I've recorded uh, you know my bands that I've been in and my friends bands but uh, if anything were to happen to me as I was thinking in the hospital people I would only be left with people my friends and family would only be left with uh, stories that they would heard or those videos so I thought why don't I start something where I can just tell, speak freely, speak about my thoughts, about whatever I'm thinking at that time. And so we're on episode 83 of the Brog, and you can see what my thoughts uh, have been on a variety of subjects over the last uh, year and a half or year and a bit. So what I'm actually doing is I'm recording this on my Canon camera, so it's going to be in 1080p or 720 HD. And I got a timer going on here because this particular camera only records in 10 minute clips. So I'll have to stop this and edit it. But uh, what I wanted to talk about. Oh, look at that. What I wanted to talk about today, I guess it sort of ties in with our intro there. Uh, so the, the story of the Brog is. Um, I just wanted to, to start a show where I could talk freely and. I have no time limits and so in between doing that starting that I also had another idea where 
I thought to myself, wow, for the for the most of the brog or the Adam Josh oral brog, I've been sitting down in the office. And it just so happens that I'm in my office, uh, you know, during the week, during the mornings usually, so I have time to do things like this. But um, so I thought, well, I'm going to start an, another show called Add Him in Different Places. So I started this other thing where I just take, you know, I have a camera that I'm walk around or wherever I am throughout my day or through the week and various clips that I think are interesting and then I compile them all together in a plus him show which you can also or add him show which you can also watch on the same YouTube channel that you're probably on right now oh no it's on the Adam to Joshua channel so you go on to YouTube and type in Adam the number two and then Joshua all these things can be found off the website adamjosh.com and if you're watching this on the website, then it's the site you're on. All that being said, uh, this is the 83rd episode of The Brog, and I wanted to talk about how it's good advice to just live your life. And I'm going to break that down in a variety of ways, but I've had it on my mind the last little while to tell this, maybe talk to myself, maybe talk to people who will listen, my friends and family, people who are interested in the brog. But as our intro may have tied in a bit, sometimes it takes a near-death experience or several near-death experiences, uh, in some people's cases, to smarten up and sort of prioritize their life and look at their life in a, in a real way. We have this tendency in this culture maybe or uh, by programming to live like vicariously through like celebrities or people we admire or even more successful people in our friends and family or or whatever but uh, it seems like we do everything else but live our life and what I mean by that is it, I hope it doesn't get to the point in your life where you're literally on your deathbed where you realize that nobody else is there with you. Like, I mean, your friends and family might be there with you, but like the celebrities that you admire aren't going to sit there and walk you through death or hold your hand. The people that you've been giving all your power away aren't going to be there. And for a lot of people, even their gods and their heroes or, or idols aren't going to be there, you know, crossing that Rubicon of life and death with you. So, uh, in most people, it takes them uh, getting to that point of a near-death experience or major life experience where they realize that. And I, I just hope that I would rather that people didn't have to get to that point. But to realize that live your own life. Like, I am I am not you, you're not me, and uh, I can only be me, you know? I, I guess we could... Hmm a lot of things we could talk about but I've had it on my mind like I am not anybody that I admired when I was growing up I mean when I was younger here's a good example uh, I guess everybody goes through this teenage phase where they like nowadays it's Justin Bieber or you know whoever you like as a guy I liked uh, Kurt Cobain a lot and I thought uh, Nirvana was great and I even got the Nevermind album cover the naked baby floating on my in my chest I got that tattooed there and uh, it took me a little while to realize that that was a mistake. I ended up paying for laser surgery to have it taken off. And I guess slowly it started, I started realizing that, like, I'm not Kurt Cobain. Uh, and he's not me. Like, I, even though there's things I may respect or admire about his art, uh, I'm not him. So living, living in any sort of way, like, vicariously through him is sort of detrimental only to myself and the fact that I, whatever power or energy I could, was giving away to him, I could have kept for myself and lived a, a more enriching life. And I don't know how I would explain this to 14, 13 year old Adam, but I'd try. So, you have young girls looking up to, you know, whatever role models, and young boys, whatever, looking up to whatever role models. And not that role models are a bad thing, but you see like in sports where fully grown men will still be idolizing, uh, you know, athletes. I mean, 
and a lot of these guys don't have family or friends in this game and sports are great for kids but uh, as you get older I don't I'm not the best person to talk about sports but what I what I was getting at was you know at the end of the day I'm only I'm only me I mean I can I can think and I can know stats or I can know details about Kurt Cobain or whatever you know insert my one of my favorite artists here I listen to a lot of different music so I have a lot of different influences that I in people that I admire uh, but I am not those people now I went to a Bible college and I guess the the uh, leader guy Peter Youngren was trying to the best he could you know make copies of himself and uh, I got kicked out I think because everybody whoa this guy is not like us I'm not them like I'm not you I'm I'm totally me you we may share ideas but uh, but I'm not Peter Youngren and I have a strong not that I have a strong sense of identity but I have a or that I'm ridiculously proud or into myself, but I know that I'm not you. You know, you're you and I'm me. And we, you, at the end of your life, you're gonna close your eyes and go wherever your, you know, your journey takes you. And I'm, I'm not going there. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you're living your entire whole life, and your friends and some, sometimes even your friends and family will abandon you. Sometimes even your friends and family won't be there. I've, I've been to several funerals, and I've seen like the I've seen people with lots of people around them when they die and lots of people that aren't around them but my, but even that what I mean is nobody's there with you like it's not like as you're on your deathbed 20 people come in and they're all like your idols and they're all like all right you've given us all your power and here we are to guide you through this and you know we've been such an important part of your life but here we are to help you through this transitional period and guide you like that doesn't happen and so your entire life you've been giving your power and your energy and, and your dedication and time and thoughts away to people that aren't going to help you, you know, like that aren't there for you. And it's a, it's a callous maybe and a cold truth to, to handle, but like most people live their own life. Most people don't care about you. Like most people, it's not that they don't, some people even don't care. It's that they have their own life and their own thoughts and their own, so most people have families and jobs and they can't spend all their time thinking about you so and I may be just talking to myself here but uh, my point is I've got to the conclusion in my own life that I'm not gonna give my power away and if that's what enlightenment is then uh, I've been enlightened I'm not giving my power away to anybody uh, any of my idols or any anybody that I used to hope in or trust in or gods or heroes or whatever I'm not waiting for anybody to improve my life or to complete me as a person and I have this feeling that all the great teachers throughout history have been saying the same thing that I'm trying to describe but then we idolize them and they've been saying like all, all along you have the power within you look within the kingdom of heaven is within you you can do greater things than me and more don't worship me I have this feeling like like if the creator of this universe was embodied in any sort of form he wouldn't be into people falling at his knees and or her, her knees uh, and worshiping I have this feeling that uh, the creator of all this if there is one singular defined creator uh, who could be embodied in a human body? Why not a dog body? But if the but if the singular creator of this entire realm that we're in could be embodied in a human body, I don't think one of the first words out of his or her mouth would be "fall down at your knees and worship me" because I need that. I'm so ridiculously insecure that the only thing I need right now is for you to to give me your power. I think it's pretty self-evident that uh, the true and real creator of this realm or universe or whatever you want to term it religiously wouldn't be into worship because he would know who, or he or she would know who he is he doesn't have identity crises he's not he wouldn't be like 
insecure in that sense. Don't worship me. Keep your power to yourself. Don't adulate me. Um, I know who I am. I don't need you to laud me or hate me. Just live your own life. I think that would be a strong message. And I've read what people call the Bible, uh, you know, 13, 14 times now. I'm in the Gospel of Matthew. And short of my uh, constant thoughts of, hey, if, Messiah, if the Messiah was on Twitter nowadays, it would be, hey, Peter, Andrew, leave your nets and come follow me on Twitter. And what do you have? Um, 12 followers on Twitter? Or would he have 70? Or would he have 90? or would he, How many followers would the Messiah have on Twitter? I don't know. The Pharisees would, uh, you know, and Judas would sign him into Foursquare the night of his execution. Hashtag Passover. But short of all that, those jokes aside, I'm getting this strong sense that although that people who documented, you know, the life and times of were were chronicling miracles and healings, you see a lot of this strong theme of, uh, you know, keep your power to yourself or like the kingdom of God is within you, look within, um, you can do greater things than I can, uh, don't worship me type, type messages. And... Nowadays, we sort of are in a culture or a society where we hang up like all our hopes and dreams, hope and change, and you know, save me from this economic crisis on like one person. And like we just, we hope, I don't know if we're, we're just gullible or we're sheep, but we just hope that that one person can define our lives and then we have celebrities that we live vicariously through and we know stats and scores about people that, that we've never met. I've never met. Angelina Jolie. I've never met Brad Pitt. Maybe one day I will. I, I doubt it. And uh, these we think that because these people are all celebrities that they all know each other. But now we're finding out because of the internet that celebrities don't like, oh, we're, we're all celebrities so we all hang out. Like, that doesn't happen. A lot of times they're so isolated because of their celebrity and because of the layers of security that are around these people that they don't get to have normal lives like most people have, like going grocery shopping and just hanging out and being a normal person. Normal person. And here we are giving all our worship, our energy, whatever you want to call it, away to these people that we don't know, that we've never met. And most importantly, as I was saying at the outset, they're not you. They're not us. A strong message throughout the scriptures is if you believe in your heart, you could say to this mountain, get up and move, but don't doubt. If you doubt, a, a doubting man is like this, like a ship on the sea, tossed and driven and unstable in all his ways. But if you actually believe something in your heart and, uh, and you, it's like say you, you're, you want something or you believe something about yourself. If, if, if you believe something about yourself, that's how it is. Like if you believe in your heart that you're nothing, that you're worthless, that you're not worth anything or worth anybody's love, then then who can con who can convince you otherwise of that belief if you actually believe that? That's why one of my one of my phrases that I use a lot is like if you want to do it, then do it. Like people, I've always had this hunch that people do what they want to do, and you could say, well, and they take it to extremes, like, well, if somebody's got a gun to your head. And it's like, do this or that. What do you want? It's not a choice of want. But still, in that choice, in that, in that gun to your head type scenario, you're still choosing what you want to do, even if it's under pressure or the lesser of two evils. Um, most people generally do what they want to do. So what am I saying? I'm saying live your own life. Your life. Find the things that you want to do and do them and try to do them. Don't put all your, project all your power and energy and live vicariously through other people because these people, first of all, most of them you'll never meet or you don't know them. Your time and energy and efforts would be better spent keeping that energy to yourself. If you could, if you could imagine your energy literally as something that you're losing or giving away you know, keep all that to yourself and live your own life. 
think about what do you want out of life? Imagine yourself like what what do you want to do? What would excite you? What would I have a ridiculous sense of adventure. So I like to have adventures. I like to go do different things. And um I've just always had a weird sense of adventure. I like to get in different situations and change my life now and again and go do different things and I like traveling a lot and I know that. So that's what I like to do and I enjoy doing. So instead of watching uh, somebody else live that life that I want to live or living vicariously through somebody else who I've never met who, who uh, you know, isn't me, I'd rather focus my efforts these days on doing these things myself. Um, so that's a good time to sit down and ask, what do you want out of life? Instead of constantly giving your power away or energy away to other people, you realize, okay, well, if I'm going to keep all that energy to myself and not give it away to gods or heroes or idols or celebrities, then now it's, it's all that power is back with me, so I'm wondering, what do I do? What do I want? What, what do you want out of life? Because you have all this time and energy and attention now to yourself and some people would say well that's selfish that's what are you egotistical well no I've learned things that some people only get to learn on their deathbed because I've had several near-death experiences that I'm not living your life I'm not Brad Pitt I'm not Angelina Jolie I'm not uh, I keep using those celebrities because they're just the first ones that keep coming to my mind I'm not Barack Obama I'm not Kurt Cobain I'm not Dave Grohl and they're living their own lives, you know? They're not wondering, I wonder what Adam Josh is doing right now. I, I'm going to, you know, like, they're living their own lives. And they would probably tell you, live your own life if they could, you know, if they could give you honest advice, these people. They wouldn't be like, yeah, I want your entire life to be about me. Watch all my movies and listen to all my music because that's what's important to me. Like, you see how silly it is? Not that you shouldn't listen to music or whatever, but there's you understand that there's this difference between respecting and listening to music and or watching movies and then constantly giving your power away or idolizing. You know the difference, and so do I. There's those kids that listen to Justin Bieber, and then there's those kids that listen to Justin Bieber. You know what I mean? There's those people that watch TV, and then there's people that watch TV all the time. There's people that have played World of Warcraft, and then there's people that log 12-hour days on World of Warcraft. So there's a big difference here between, you know, there's people that eat food, and then there's people that eat food. You know what I mean? So a lot to think about, but I'll, I'll wrap it up now, seeing as we've been going for a little bit, 15, 15 minutes now, or 10 minutes. I don't know, my stopwatch is saying five minutes, but I've reset the video here a few times. My point is to live your life, not to live somebody else's. That the kingdom of God and all that lovey-dovey stuff is within you. Keep your power to yourself. I got a hunch that if uh, you could meet the creator of this entire universe, he wouldn't be into worship. He wouldn't be into you getting down on your knees and begging and being ridiculously afraid of him. In fact, through all my readings of uh, the scriptures, through the through the prophets and Revelation and and uh, the writings and all that, every time that a prophet or or uh, or somebody comes into contact with an angel or a representative or messenger of uh, the God of the Bible, you see the words, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, over and over again. Why? Why? Why does this God, this messenger, keep telling us to not be afraid? Because he's not into worship. He's not into that type of, oh, I am the all-powerful, bow before me. Like, what? And if that was your idea of God, like what a pathetic idea of God. What a weak idea of God. What a limited idea of God that you have. And maybe you need to repent. Maybe you need to give your head a shake and think, why have I thought that God was this ridiculous, insecure, weak person that he's 
needs the worship of other people. Feed me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's limited, it's small, and it's pathetic. It's demonic, actually. These people, I believe that, that there's different entities that have posed as gods, and when people say God, I usually say, which one? There's lots of gods. There isn't? Haven't you heard about religion? There's lots of gods. Whether these are ideological constructs or actual beings or aliens or whatever is up for debate, but the fact that there is gods isn't up for debate. There are. It's like saying there isn't there isn't Republicans. Like there's Republicans. There's a whole bunch of them. There's gods because we've called this physical, ideological, maybe not so physical thing God. So we've we've created gods in that sense. And we've also have maybe alien gods. Who knows? But there's I believe that there's demonic entities for sure. Or dark forces that have crept in and pose as our gods because they want that power. You know corrupt people and corrupt beings attract are attracted to power. Because they want it. Me, I'm not into worship. I'm not into people lauding after me. I'm not into that. Uh, and I don't think uh, the creator of this universe would be into that either because I know who I am and I'm going to live my own life. Thanks for watching the Barab. <laughs>